So the third presentation will be by Helen Cox, uh, who works at the Cape Town University, and he, she's trained as epidemiologist, uh, specializing on drug resistant TB. And previously, she has worked with MSF in South Africa and Central Asia. Helen. And she will be presenting on reduced treatment delays for drug resistant TB HIV infected patients with decentralized care and rapid expert MTB reef test in Kalisha, South Africa. Hey, good afternoon. Thank you for the introduction. So as you have um, heard earlier, there is a persistent uh, TB epidemic. Um, but in addition, there is also a, a growing epidemic of drug-resistant TB with more than uh, um, nearly half a million cases estimated in 2012. This is an e epidemic that's primarily being driven by direct transmission of already drug-resistant TB strains in most high burden settings. And it's not an epidemic that is confined to Eastern Europe, uh, European countries or countries of the former Soviet Union. It's also um, uh, high in many high pre pre HIV prevalent settings, particularly in sub-Saharan Africa. Unfortunately, access to second line treatment for drug resistant TB, rifampicin resistant TB primarily, uh, has not kept pace with this epidemic. And in 2012, less than 20% of the estimated cases actually made it on to appropriate second line treatment, way less than what we actually need to even start to tackle this epidemic. There are a number of um, factors, of course, that contribute to this poor access to treatment, but principal among them are poor access to drug susceptibility testing and the reality that um, most treatment is provided through very centralised, specialised treatment programs for drug resistant TB. So in, in South Africa, I'm sure many of you have heard these figures before, there's very high HIV uh, prevalence and a very high TB incidence. So around 1,000 per 100,000 per year. So this equates to um, more than 60% of TB patients are HIV infected. And TB is, now, is the leading cause of death in South Africa. There is also a, a burgeoning epidemic of drug resistant TB. So in 2012, there were more than 14,000 cases of rifampicin resistant TB diagnosed. There is also um, a very large treatment gap in South Africa. So of the 14,000 cases that were diagnosed, only 46% of those are reported to have made it onto second line treatment. Now there may be some error around these numbers because they're routine numbers and we know that there are some error, but there is definitely a treatment gap. In addition to a treatment gap, so many patients don't actually make it onto treatment at all, there are long delays um, before di between diagnosis and actually making it onto sec second line treatment for drug resistant TB. So these are some examples of studies that where the delays are often many months um, between when a sputum sample is taken and when a patient is actually finally placed on an appropriate second line TB regimen. So as was mentioned earlier, the expert MTB RIF test um, offers the opportunity to not just diagnose TB, but also diagnose rifampicin resistance at the same time. And South Africa has um, made a bold decision to roll out gene expert across the country to all pa patients with presumptive TB. Uh, and so this graph shows uh, the number of uh, the instruments that have been placed across South Africa since the rollout began in 2011. And to date, more than uh, three and a half million specimens have been tested. And theoretically, you can get a, a result in the same day with the gene expert. So there are a lot of benefits to very rapid diagnosis to rifampicin resistance. So this is data from Tegela Ferry where the outbreak of XDR-TB, so extensively drug resistant TB, was first described back in 2006, 2007. Um, and these are primarily HIV infected patients. And you can see, so this is a survival curve. Sorry, I'm just trying to get the cursor up. Very rapid mortality within the first month from when the sputum sample was taken. Um, so if we can start patients on treatment early, we can perhaps try and avert some of this very rapid mortality. And of course, there is also an impact on 
community transmission. The earlier we can start treatment, the, the less risk of transmitting drug-resistant TB to other people. So the aim of this study was to assess the impact of the expert uh, diagnostic test for rifampicin resistant TB diagnosis on the time to treatment initiation in the context of a decentralized drug resistant TB program in Kyalitja in Cape Town. So Kyalitja is um, a township just outside of Cape Town. It has a population of uh, just less than half a million pe people, very high HIV prevalence um, and very high TB burden. But a, a good DOTS program and a high uh, ART uh, coverage. There are approximately 200 patients diagnosed every year with rifampicin resistant TB and 75% of these are HIV infected, which is the same proportion amongst drug susceptible TB. There are 10 health facilities, 10 primary health care facilities that provide integrated HIV, TB and drug resistant TB um, diagnosis and treatment care and support. So very briefly, the, the Kyalitja decentralized model has as its premise hospital admission only if clinically indicated. So patients are only admitted to hospital if they are un unwell enough and require admission. Otherwise, they are managed by primary healthcare doctors who, who initiate treatment as soon as possible, as soon as a diagnosis is received. And they receive their treatment in their local clinic. And that's integrated with their ART um, provision. And there are some additional services also provided and a lot of uh, counseling and additional support um, to go with the very difficult drug-resistant TB treatment regimen. So this graphic just shows you some of the interventions by year. So um, up until 2011, uh, so across 2007 and 2008, we introduced the line probe assay in South Africa or in Cape Town to diagnose TB. And then we had that up until to the start of, end of 2011 when the expert came in. And in terms of decentralization for drug resistant TB, we started at the end of 2007 and gradually improved this program so that we had full implementation by 2011. In terms of cases diagnosed and treated for drug-resistant TB, of the approximately 200 per year, you can see that more than 80% were actually started on treatment uh, across um, the years since 2009, since we started the program. So this is consistently high and much higher than the 46% that is reported across uh, South Africa. Now, in terms of time to drug-resistant TB treatment, this graph shows the median days to treatment. And the, the first section shows the impact of introducing the line probe assay, which is a, a PCR-based assay. And you can see that that reduced the time to treatment by about almost three weeks. Decentralization. Uh, so, so just getting the systems in place to diagnose more cases and treat them in the community without having to refer to hospitals decreased the time to treatment from 50 days down to 28 days. So it was still taking a month from when a patient presented in a health facility before we could start treatment. And this was primarily laboratory delay. This was the time taken to actually diagnose the patient in the laboratory. The implementation of expert um, managed to reduce that down to seven days, so a median of seven days between presentation at a clinic um, and starting an appropriate treatment regimen. And all, these were all significant uh, impacts. And just to show that these were similar in terms of time to treatment for both HIV negative and HIV positive uh, drug resistant TB patients. There, were, there was a difference, though, in, in terms of the proportion initiating treatment overall between HIV negative and HIV positive. Consistently lower proportions of HIV infected patients actually started treatment, and this was a, a significant difference. And the main reasons for, reason for this was early mortality. So this is a time to treatment graph um, with patients who died before they could start treatment censored at that point of time. And the censors, censored patients are shown in the, with the, the dark uh, circles. As you can see that these are all very early on. 
And so most of these patients died very rapidly after they presented to health services before treatment could be initiated. Um, and so otherwise, these, these curves are very, very similar and not significantly different. So actually, it's very difficult to start treatment much earlier than this, and a few days might not have made much difference to actually preventing this mortality. So probably it's earlier presentation that is required at this point to prevent these very early deaths that we're, we're still seeing despite a much better diagnosis. So just to conclude, decentralization of drug-resistant TB reduced the time to treatment down from more than two and a half months to less than a month. The introduction of the expert uh, rapid test reduced time to treatment to a median of seven days, and more than 90% of HIV-infected rifampicin-resistant TB cases started treatment, um, which is uh, actually a very impressive result when you consider what happens um, globally and across South Africa. So rapid diagnosis is very likely to reduce early mort mortality, but we still need uh, more interventions to encourage earlier presentation to really try and, and, and reduce mortality further. And we, we do think that this will have an impact ultimately on transmission, although that is of course very hard to, um, to assess. And I think one of the messages is that it's hard to, um, the impact of, of expert on health systems uh, will really only, the full benefit will really only be seen if you have a well-functioning health system in the first place. It's very hard to expect to introduce a new diagnostic and for it to fix all of the flaws that you have in your health system in the first place. So this um, worked very well because there was a well-functioning um, health system with decentralized care in the first place. So I'll just end with some acknowledgements. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. The floor is open for questions, clarifications. Okay. I have a, I have a couple of questions. Um, were you able to show improved outcomes uh, with the dec over time, with the decrease in time to uh, initiation of treatment? Well, because um, it takes more than two years to get outcomes, we're still seeing that data. So we haven't seen that those results yet. Actually, what we're seeing is higher mortality on treatment because we're getting more patients onto treatment earlier. Mm -hmm. So it will be a little bit complex to analyze that, but... Um, you can look at all mortality, for example. Yes, yeah. yeah, yeah. And the second question is, um, was this their first diagnosis of HIV? The patients who died early before they started treatment? Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah. The HIV data is, is, is it's routine data and it's a little bit complex to look at, but a lot of these patients have previously been on antiretroviral treatment for HIV and often may have defaulted. So they have very low CD4s at that time that they present. Um, so we have some, we're, on, we're analyzing this data at the moment to look at the various categories of whether they would, had never been on ART, whether they've previously been on ART, whether they're currently being on currently on ART and how this impacts on outcomes and mortality over time. It's a very good question. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that answers those questions for <laughs> All right, so I see no one. Thank you. Thank you very much.